in the last lecture we were talking about the method of synthesizing a synchronous sequential circuits and you have seen the first step of it starting from the specification how to construct the state transition diagram and state tables. Today we shall be looking at a complete worked out example starting from the state table or state transition diagram how we can go through the other steps and arrive at our final circuit diagram. So, this is the third part of our lecture on synthesis of synchronous sequential circuits. So, let us recapitulate what we had said about the synthesis of F FSMs. In the last lecture, we have seen through a number of examples how we can construct the state transition diagram and also the state table starting from the problem description. But now the question arises from the state table what next? So, once we have constructed the state table there are a few steps that are left to be done. These I shall be illustrating with the help of examples from this lecture onward. The first step that we shall go through now is something called state assignment. State assignment means that you are assigning some unique binary code to the states, assign unary, unique binary code to the states. Now, the way you do state assignment can be different. For example, if you have three states let us say A, B, C, then you can just assign the binary code 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 or 1, 0 let us say or you can use something called one hot encoding that means one of the bits in the state representation is 1, but of course, here you require three state variables. There can be many other alternatives, okay. but in the examples that we shall be showing, we shall be looking at the most compact representation say for three state variables, three states we need two bits or two state variables to represent. Okay. Now, after state assignment we will be constructing something called the transition and output table. Now, this can be constructed directly from the state table as we shall see from the state table after state assignment we shall be going to the transition and output table. Now, once transition output table is done, we will be selecting the type of memory elements that what kind of flip flop we are choosing and accordingly we will be constructing something called the excitation table. Now, you recall when we had discussed the various kinds of flip flops we talked about the excitation requirement of the flip flop. For example, for a T flip flop if you want to go from state 0 to state 1 you have to apply T equal to 1. So, for every pair of present state and next state you know what exactly you have to apply to the inputs of the flip flop. So, accordingly you create or construct something called the excitation table and from that table you can obtain some functions one is called excitation function other is called output functions. And once you up get them you can minimize them and once you have minimized you can realize them using gates or using any other modules as you feel like. Now, let us illustrate this the steps that I have mentioned through some examples. So, the example that we take in this lecture is that of a serial adder which I have already discussed in the last lecture. So, in the last lecture whatever we have discussed is shown in this slide. So, we have said that this is our functional depiction of the serial adder. There are two serial inputs x 1 and x 2. This is the serial output z and of course, there is clock. 
state transition diagram, state table. Of course, for synthesis the steps we shall be using the state table representation. So, state diagram we are not looking at right now, we shall be looking at state table. So, just let us recapitulate once in the state table. So, in the state table we have the present state specified in the first column and the next state and the output specified in the second column for all possible values of the inputs, because here we have two inputs x 1 and x 2, there can be four different input combinations. So, capital X is the combination of x 1 x 2, it can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, state table depicts the whole behavior. Now, let us see how we can proceed with the next steps. So, as I said first step will be the state assignment, because in this example there are two states. So, we can use a single bit, let us say state A may be represented by 0 and state B can be represented by 1. Well, you remember this is not unique, this is just one of the state assignments we can try out. So, you can have other state assignments also, you can have the reverse. 1 for A and 0 for B also. Okay? Fine. Now, with this state assignment your state table becomes like this, you see this is exactly the same as the state table what we have done, we have replaced A by 0 and wherever B was there we have replaced it by 1, the, here everything else remains same. You see here A and B was there, we replaced it by 0 and 1, here also A was there, here also A and B was there, here also A and B was there, here also B and B was there. Okay. The rest we have not touched. Now, just one thing you just see that in this state table, every entry of the state table, let us say here, here, every entry. So, what are we specifying? We are specifying two things, we are specifying the next state as well as we are specifying the output separated by commas, but for convenience let us separate these out in two different tables. Let the n s be there in one table and z be there in another table. It is again not anything different, but instead of writing them in a single table separated by commas for convenience let us separate them out and this is called transition and output table. You see the first part of the table is for n s, second part of the table is for the output z, exactly the same table. You see the inputs uh, the n s 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 1, you see 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 and the outputs 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 1. So, it is exactly the same thing right and uh, these this x value instead of x I am also just writing here 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 these are actually the value of x which means x 1 x 2 because you recall the two inputs of our circuits are x 1 and x 2 the two the two serial inputs that are coming those are x 1 and x 2 right. Okay. Now, the next step is to select memory elements. Now, it is a choice, we do not know which one would be best, I can try out D flip flop, T flip flop, J K S R, let us start with D because it is the simplest kind of flip flop. So, let us select a D flip flop. Now, our model of the FSM was like this, there are two inputs x 1 x 2, single output z, z, this was the next state capital Y, present state small y. Now, when we are using D flip flop, what we are actually trying to do is that, here instead of this pink box, we will be using a D flip flop D and Q, wherein D will be applying some value 
and this q will be generating this small y right. So, in the original table we had the capital Y, but when we convert it into something called excitation and output table. See this was the table which we had seen earlier transition and output table just in last slide we had seen this, but from this after we have selected d flip flop now we are coming to something which is called excitation and output table excitation and output table now excitation output table will look exactly same as this because in case of a d flip flop so whatever you are applying same thing will be coming out okay just like your model here so there will be no change so here actually uh, whatever you are showing here they indicate the value of d so instead of y see here y instead of y you can call as if you are applying the d value here so whatever is d that you are applying here they will be the same thing because this capital y becomes small y when the clock comes for a d flip flop same thing happens so whatever you are applying to d that goes inside when the clock comes okay so, you have the excitation and output table like this. Now, from the excitation and output table if you just look at it, just let me go back once. If you just look at this excitation and output table you see that what are the inputs here. Here my inputs are on one side I have my input small y and on the other side here I have my inputs x 1 and x 2. So, 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, if you just interchange these two columns it will become like a Carnot map right in Carnot map you have 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0. So, if you just reverse it it will be like a Carnot similarly for the output part it will it will be like a Carnot map. Okay, because you already have these, you already have this. If you just interchange the last two columns, it will become just like a Carnot map. And for the first part, you are actually generating the function for this small y, whatever this small, uh, this actually capital, not small y, capital y. And here you are actually generating a z. So, if you just just work this out the same thing I mentioned the Carnot maps will look like this for the first one the Carnot map will look like this. So, if you try to minimize it there will be three cubes one like this one like this and one like this. So, if you see there will be three terms here I have shown x 1, x 2 on this side and small y on this side and for the second part this for the output function the ones are like you see there are no cubes possible you cannot minimize it. So, this is actually the exclusive or function. So, I have shown in a compact form in an exclusive or form, form but actually but if you uh, just want to write it in an expanded form it will be like this this one will correspond to x 1 bar x 2 bar y this one will correspond to x 1 bar x 2 y bar or this one will correspond to x 1 x 2 bar y bar or and this one will correspond to x 1 x 2 and y this is nothing but the XOR of x 1, x 2 and y. So, you see once we have generated this functions y and z, uh, this is actually a d flip flop you have chosen here. So, you have as good as designed the circuit, because from this function you can directly 
generate the value of x because here this will be nothing but an exclusive or gate x or gate x 1 x 2 and y this will be z and for generating y you will be using a circuit like this there will be 3 and gates and an or gate. this will be generating capital Y. So, the inputs will be x 1 x 2 x 1 y and x 2 y. So, for generating the output z you need an XOR function. So, you can either use an XOR gate or you can break it up into and or not gates and for generating the next state capital Y you need 3 AND gates and an OR gate, right. This is actually how you do the synthesis. The basic idea is this. Now, the same design, let us try out an alternative. Suppose, instead of D flip flop, we try with SR flip flop, right. Now, if you use SR flip flop actually what we are trying to do. Now, see earlier we had this D flip flop there was single input single output y, but now you see if you consider SR flip flop here, now it, there will be not one, but two inputs SR on one side and here the output will be y. Now, this circuit actually now will be have to be generate both S and R because this capital Y is the FSM model, but when you are mapping this memory element to an SR flip flop, this capital Y gets split into two inputs S and R, right. So, from the transition and output table when you map it to this, just see how this table is getting constructed. Second part is identical, second part there is no change, this is just the outputs. But for the next state here, the values that are shown are the values of S and R. Just see it carefully, look at this. Your present state was 0, next state is 0. For an SR flip flop, you recall what are the excitation function for SR flip flop. Just recall for SR flip flop what do you have to apply? Suppose I want to go from 0 to 0. For SR flip flop I can either apply 0 0 or I can apply 0 1 which means 0 do not care. But if I want to go from 0 to 1 there is only one way 1 0. If I want to go from 1 to 0 I have to apply 0 1, but if I want to go from 1 to 1 0 0. So, now you see here you are going from 0 to 0, 0 to 0, 0 to 0 all 3. So, you see 0 x 0 x 0 x 0 to 0 is 0 x 0 to 1 0 to 1 is 1 0 then 1 to 0. 1 2 0 ok actually 1 2 0 this will be 0 1 not 1 0 1 2 0 and rest are 1 2 1 1 2 1 1 2 1. So, it will be 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, you see here also again you have constructed the specification for the map from where you can minimize. So, you can again minimize using corner map from here. Just I am showing you well, just one thing uh, just uh, you can rectify this error because this 1 0 would actually be 0 1. So, we can make it correct. So, what do we do the first part of the table which contains the pairs 2 those we split it up into S and R the first one we use for S second one we use for R. right. 
So, you make that correction okay, without that correction I am just showing you just to illustrate what is being done. So, you just see where the ones are you put them in the k map minimize them you will get s you will get r and in this case you will get z for the output and this will be a function you can implement it. But if you want to just try to rectify that confusion which was there just a second let us go back. So, from this let us try to construct the map from here. Let us construct the map y here and on this side it will be x 1 x 2. So, it will be 0 0, 0 1, 1 1, 1 0 and 0 1 this is for s ok let us say this for s s is the first one first 0 1 so 1 you just only note down once and 1 these two ones are there for s there is a one uh, there is a 1 here and a 1 here there and for r what will happen for r for r the corner map will be the right side there are no ones there is no 1. Okay. So, r will be 0. So, r you do not apply anything and s there will be 2 terms there will be or of these 2 and output similarly output in the same way it will be a corner map you can just do it. Okay. I am sorry this will 1 will be here because it is 1 1 it will be here. Okay. So, in this way you can just generate the functions and after you generate uh, these functions you can actually minimize them and after minimization you can realize the circuit like this. This is the basic idea how you do it. So, here I have just worked out one example that of a 2 bit serial adder and some more examples I shall be explaining in our next lecture also. So, uh, we come to the end of this lecture if you recall we have worked out the complete synthesis flow with the help of a simple example that of a serial adder. We had seen earlier in our last lecture how we can construct the state transition diagram and the state table and from the state table we looked at the various steps that you need to do starting from state assignment, transition output table, excitation table, then minimizing using the Carnot maps and so on and get the final circuit. So, we shall be working out some more examples in the next couple of lectures. Thank you.